The very best known of the ceratopsians is, of course, the genus Triceratops. And there are all the relevant characteristics for the thing. Um, I'm not going to belabor them here, but one thing that I did want to point out out of all of these is this complex dental battery with replacement, which I've shown here. If you look at the face of the Triceratops, you can see it has an inset uh, cheek teeth row. So again, we've talked about this before. The teeth are inset in the head so that if you just draped flesh from the top part of the skull to the bottom part, it would leave a big open pouch uh, between the skin and the teeth, leaving a lot of room to uh, process and work lots of vegetation. Uh, it's a key feature of herbivores. But it also has a dental battery with constant tooth replacement. So the teeth here are enlarged up in the corner, and you can see that uh, as these different teeth get worn down from constantly chewing, grinding, chewing, grinding vegetation, at some point they pop off they fall out, they're gone, and they are replaced by a tooth immediately below. And so this, uh, again, clearly indicates this type of um, intense herbivorous lifestyle where it is constantly, constantly eating vegetation. Uh, one interesting fact about Triceratops, sadly, is that it's a taxonomic mess. For a while there, paleontologists would name a new species uh, from every new hill where they found one. And currently, there's over a hundred different ones on the books, and they were named for the slightest, smallest little thing. If something had a different ratio of head length to foot length or toe length or shape or something, they gave it a new species name. It was one way to... I suppose, make themselves more um, perennial, immortal, whatever you want to say. It's very poor practice, and now we're in the process of overturning it. In point of fact, there probably were several species. Look there, I say two or three, not too many, really. Really, it is just the natural variation of a single species. And so here, all of these are different. Triceratops prorsus, elatus, flabellatus, serratus, calicornis. Uh, it was very hard to tell at all how many there were. What about its stance? Um, obviously, it had the advanced mesotarsal angle, uh, ankle joint, but was it a straight up graviportal type posture or did it have its limbs splayed out? or sprawled out to the side. Don't really know, but one way to look at it is to compare the bones of Triceratops with those of modern animals that we can watch stand in their um, given uh, orientations. And so if you look at this, you've got the rhino, which has a clear graviportal stands straight up and down posture. You've got the lizard, which has a sprawled posture and has an orientation like this. And then you have Triceratops. And really, uh, we still can't tell. Um, I would guess that from my estimation and from what most people tend to say in the paleo world is that it's kind of in between. It was an organism that wasn't fully graviportal like a rhino or a horse, but it wasn't fully splayed like a lizard. So the Goldilocks solution right in the middle. And then finally, the last thing that people usually want to talk about with Triceratops are the horns and the frill. And the picture you see here is the classic example of intraspecies conflict, basically uh, males fighting among males. Um, so that's probably a use for it. There was probably a huge element of sexual display uh, bigger horns, bigger frill meant more um, visual displays for getting females. But there's also just a pure mechanical um, function that was possible as well. And that is that the bigger the frill, the bigger the place to attach 
large jaw muscles. We already talked about how these were eating machines um, and that how they had the adaptation of the um, inset cheek teeth as well as the dental battery for replacement. Well, this would be another thing along those lines, a natural selection for enhanced herbivory. Also, we can't rule out the fact that, well, it's a large upraised uh, structure that could be alternately aimed towards the sun uh, if something needs to be heated up or tilted at a 90 degree angle from it, or even getting it wet to cool it down. It was vascularized. So perhaps there is some element of thermoregulation there. Don't know. Interesting creature. Still a lot of work being done.